Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Petre Pyska from uh, Finnish Meteorological Institute, and I'm going to present the current weather situation uh, in Europe and also briefly talk about the beginning of December in Finland. That's been uh, quite warm. Uh, first, I would like to know a little about you all who are attending. Uh, should I please ask you to place a mark on the map where you're participating from to this session? And uh, if you could also place a mark on one of the boxes, if you are a forecaster, researcher, manager, trainer, Yes, let's see, we have people from all over Europe as expected. <laughs> Quite a lot of people from Central Europe and uh, some, some people also from quite near from the Baltic. Thank, thank you. Uh, let's uh, Let's move on to the to the actual weather briefing, and uh, I will start um, with this water vapor. Water vapor image from this morning um, is from 6 UTC time. Uh, there is a slightly metering jet stream. Jet stream. Uh, Going from west to east, uh, the jet stream is, uh, is the strongest just just on the mm, west side of the British British Isles. It can be seen from here, um, and it's a little weaker weaker in the southern southern Scandinavia and in the Baltics, and then uh, it's stronger again on the the, over Russia, and uh, there is a big area of low pressure here on the left side of the jet, but it's not actually on the most ideal location for further strengthening. And, but it, uh, but it's not expected to weaken substantially anytime soon either. Um, and it will it will have an effect on the Christmas weather that we all <laughs> would like to know about. And um, there is also an upper level trough here here uh, with an associated. Uh, Peter, sorry, mm -hmm. please just use sorry. the point uh, when you're talking about. Sorry, the sorry, I need, yeah, sorry, I need to, yeah, sorry, I didn't know that I need to press it. And uh, there's an upper level trough here associated with the surface. Surface um, low, low here in the southern, southern um, Scandinavia and the Baltic. Uh, that's causing some precipitation in Finland and Sweden and the Baltic. And as you can see from here, there is not a lot going on in uh, southern or Central Europe's southern parts, there is an uh, upper level low uh, near Bulgaria and uh, the Black Sea. That's causing some light precipitation, precipitation in the in the area. Mm. An upper level low is also visible to the, on the edge of the image uh, over the northern Africa. Uh, causing some cloudiness and quite wide precipitation there. Next up, there is an um, Hermes RGB image from this morning, also from 6 UTC. Um, the cold and warm air masses are quite nicely visible from this picture. Roughly, you could say that the uh, the warm is confined to the south, southwest, uh, southeast is also quite warm, 
uh, there is an outbreak of colder air to the west side, in the back side of the large low pressure system, and uh, there is also some convective cloud visible. That is that is typical to this kind of colder outbreak situation. Also, mm, there is a from front frontal zone with more precipitation that is affecting affecting the British British Isles. Um, here in the air mass picture, the the warmer air masses are depicted by this olive olive green. And uh, the greener the greener the hue is the the more moist the air, air mass is in the upper upper atmosphere and here you can see this um the dry descending stratospheric air uh, which is depicted by this brownish or reddish colors uh this is also visible here somewhat with the with the weaker jet and also over russia and up to some extent also here here uh over bulgaria and and uh, the the Black Sea. And here we have uh, we have model out, output from the uh, zero zero run of of ECMWS weather model. And uh, as we could see from before, the the cold. The, the cold is uh, ru rushing from the, from the um, backside of the low pressure system, although it's not very super cold as of yet, but it will get somewhat colder as time goes on. And uh, the coldest air masses of Russia are confined to the very, to the very north. There is also some quite cold air mass over northern Finland here. The uh, southeastern part is uh, partially mild, partially uh, quite cold due to the uh, a bit chillier due to the uh, upper low of the area. And uh, in the southwestern Europe, we have the the warmest air masses. Currently, and actually, the Canary Islands didn't fit to the picture, but there, there, mass temperature is about 10 degrees, so it's quite nice weather there at the moment. And here, up next, we have um, you know, the uh, day national color GB picture image. Uh, and as uh, we can see north, especially over over the Baltics, uh, whole span of Scandinavia, uh, Russia. Russia here is covered covered with clouds. Also, also the eastern Eastern Europe is very cloudy. Um, here you can also see the the snow cover that is. Uh, it's quite quite well depicted here in white, greenish greenish hues, and it, it's the result mainly of the of the first first week of December that the the Alps had a lot of snowfall due to the low pressure activity in the area. And here uh, you can also see that in Germany, France, and Spain, Italy, parts of parts of uh, Greece and uh, south, southern and eastern Turkey are also uh, quite cloud-free. Mm, okay, this animation didn't work as, as wanted here, but. Uh, yeah, there is a, 
There is today a night microphysical RGB from the from Europe at 9:30 UTC today earlier. Uh, it's, uh, it combines the night, night and day. Uh, day uh, microphysical imaging ever uh, day for uh, of course when there is when there is the daylight available and here in the image uh, low to middle water clouds with smaller particles are uh, depicted with the uh, with green hues, greenish hues, and um, they usually, they indicate the, the lower, low, lowest clouds, mist and fog uh, with the smaller particle sizes. Mm -hmm. And if there is, if there is uh, a little bit of mixture of those green and more of those hues of red, reddish, uh, it may indicate that the cloud is the cloud is a um, little bit thicker th thicker and especially it indicates that it um, it contains larger particles and thus there might be some drizzle or up north even freezing drizzle expected and uh, this this uh, Imager is uh, would would be very nice for uh, the Finland's weather conditions during the during the winter time, but we don't have too much of the daylight here up north uh, from December to February when it would be the most useful, unfortunately. And here you can see the with pink. You can see snow and ice in the Alps, which is uh, probably even more clearly visible than in the in the uh, daylight picture of the natural colors. And uh, <clears throat> here, the f number four uh, four indicates the guys clouds, and here uh, there is also, of course, some underlying cloud layers. Uh, under these thick ice clouds, and uh, it's uh, quite uh, important to uh, distinguish between the numbers uh, one and five, where, where the five, this more uh, more olive green color indicates semi-transparent ice ice clouds. Uh, but it usually usually it is quite quite easy. Although in some situations, if this would lie on top of each other, it would be quite challenging to know what's going on <coughs> under all this of this ice cloud. If the if the lower lower la layer would also be a, not the, like totally overcast. The year um, I chose, I chose, I chose to show you this nice image from the Alps earlier uh, yesterday in the afternoon, late afternoon, from a Suomi NPP satellite VIRS instrument. And uh, there, there's a spectrum of different wavelengths that have been used to be able to distinguish between different types of snow uh, based on the particle particle size. And here in the image, uh, areas of fresh and dry snow are depicted in brighter 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 colors uh, of the mountain tops mainly. Uh, and areas of moist and older snow are in darker, darker colors. 
and uh, we had some luck with this image there. Now, now there was not too much, too much cloudiness yesterday, so we could, we could choose this for here. Now, there is a current weather warning for meteor alarm in Europe. Uh, here in Finland, we have some road weather conditions uh, because of snow, snow and sleet. Uh, that is falling uh, close, close by the low pressure system here. Mm, probably the most important that catches my eye is the, is the amber weather warning in Western England uh, due to the uh, due to a um, lot of precipitation precipitation that's caused by this. Very, uh, very large for a low pressure system over the Atlantic. And uh, it, it, the same system is also causing, causing some warnings in southwestern France, some wind warnings and uh, flood warnings. And then on the southeast of France, there is, there, there is the uh, Adelance warning warning currently there uh, because of so much snowfall fell at the beginning of the beginning of December and I just fast go through this uh, the situation in Finland in the beginning of December uh, it started off as quite warm uh, Lapland 47 degrees warmer than the average in southern and central Finland. The anomaly is smaller, but still mm, uh, two to four degrees. And uh, to the upland situation, lack of cold air outbreaks are the main reason for the big anomaly there. And uh, the first two weeks in December, there was a big anti-cyclone that was very persistent over Russia and thus the southern and southeastern Continental airflow um, was very was very persistent and contributed to the temperatures in the whole whole country. And this can also see seen nicely in the in the uh, precipitation anomaly map, especially when you take a look at the eastern Finland, when uh, there is not not too much. Not too much rain that has precipitation that has fallen so far in December. Uh, continental air air masses tend to be quite dry, and we didn't get any uh, sometimes surprise low pressures from the direction of Black Sea or anything that would have affected our weather for a longer time and given a great amount of precipitation. And uh, in Lapland, uh, the anomaly is smaller. There's actually some positive precipitation anomaly in the southwestern Lapland. Because the storm track um, went from here uh, somewhat when the um, anti-cyclone was situation, situa situated over Russia. And uh, that is also seen on the snow jet anomaly map. There's uh, mainly mainly only normal amount of snow in some parts of northern northern Finland here. And the anomaly, the negative anomaly, is the greatest in northern northern parts of Finland, northern Lapland, and uh, southern and western Finland are mostly snow free. And here's the map of the current uh, snowfall, uh, snow cover in Europe from NOAA's uh, snow and ice chart uh, by US National Ice Center. And there is snow in parts of Eastern Europe, uh, Fen of Scandinavia, uh, Iceland, and the Alps, of course, and, and Russia. And here, uh, I have 
uh, the ECMWS uh, monthly, uh, the weekly uh, temperature anomaly map for the for the next week and the week after that. So this would be the Christmas week, as we can see, it's uh, quite the the red anomaly, the warm anomaly is is quite big. So uh, not very likely that we we would see a lot of snow in southern and central Finland. So we'll see about that. Um, and uh, here we you can see the the effect of the the low pressure, the cold cold weather outbreak, and it's also visible here here in the uh, the year shift that there would be some cold air rushing from the north to the southwest and western Europe, whereas Finland and Scandinavia. Uh, parts of Finland, Scandinavia, and southwest Eastern Europe would stay warm. And uh, I've made a quick uh, Christmas forecast for for um, this year. In six days. Uh, here we have the high pressure over the over the Atlantic and. Um, there is this uh, the uh, low pressure system, the track of which is currently not very well forecast as of yet, and uh, it might give some snow parts of uh, Balt Baltic region, especially Estonia. There might actually be a lot of snow. Probably also in Finland, we will see about that. But uh, here, uh, the cold outbreak at this point doesn't seem to be too strong, at least yet. So uh, probably in the highlands of uh, Scotland, uh, there would be sleet or snow. But in southern England, uh, southern parts of the British Isles, definitely some rain. Also rain, rain and uh, unstable conditions in uh, central central Europe. But here in in Spain, especially in the south, uh, quite nice and warm, uh, but with changing cloud conditions in the in Italy and the Balkan, Greece, and uh, quite sunny in, in Turkey, Turkey and uh, the Greek islands. But uh, I will thank you, thank you for for this for my part, and I will wish you wish you a very merry Christmas and a happy new year. I hope it will be a lot better than this year. Thank you. Okay, do you hear me now? Yes, yes, very well. Okay, good. So, so this second part is. Not about this winter, but about the last winter, 2019-20, and particularly in Finland, and in the context of a warming climate. So here I will be. Wait a second. Why is nothing happening? Uh, actually, covering two, two separate but related topics. So first of all. Last winter was actually record mild in southern Finland. So I'm asking the question, how is the probability of such mild winters affected by climate change? Second, the snow conditions were also quite peculiar in Finland. And I will be contrasting this with climate model projections of changes in snow conditions in the future. But let us start from this first one. So here I have time series of December, January, February mean temperature in Helsinki at the south coast of Finland, beginning from the beginning of the 20th century. And you can see that there's large interannual variability. But nevertheless, in the 20th century, the mildest winter was 1922 uh, for 25, with a mean of 1.0 degrees. Then in 2007, 08, we had 
a new record of 1.4 degrees centigrade. And this was clearly beaten in the last winter with a mean value of 2.3 degrees centigrade. So now this kind of high temperatures that we observed last winter, they raise at least three questions. So first of all, how rare is such a mild winter actually? How much has the warming experience this far already affected the probability of such mild winters? And how often will as mild or even milder winters occur in the future? And now this first question is something that we can try to answer directly using observations. And in this case, I'm using observations for the 20th century. So ending in the year 2000, and I'm calculating the frequency distribution of the winter temperatures and then fitting some analytical curve to end up with this blue line. So the top is close to minus 4 degrees centigrade, which was a typical winter temperature in Helsinki in last century. And of course, temperatures that are substantially lower or higher are both less common. So now when we would like to know how often we can expect temperatures exceeding the value in last maybe 2.3 degrees centigrade, we need to calculate the area that falls to the right of this line and below this blue, blue line. And this area is actually quite small. It corresponds to a probability of about 0.2%, which means that it should only be as mild approximately once in five centuries. However, there is an obvious problem in these calculations. These observations are from the 20th century, and the climate is changing, getting warmer. So present climate is not well represented by these observations. So how can we actually try to estimate the probability distribution of winter mean temperature? in present climate and also in future climate. So here I'm using a method that is based on combining two things. So first of all, I use change in global mean temperature as I has been observed this far and for the future from climate model projections. And second, I'm using climate model based estimates on the regional details of the change specifically the ratio between the local and global mean temperature changes and also the changes in, in the annual variability. So why I'm using climate model simulations here and not directly the local observations is because at the local level, the signal to noise day ratio between the climate change and the natural variability is still relatively low. So these details cannot be estimated very well from the observations. In any case, the result of this procedure is a time series of observed temperatures adjusted to present or future climate. So let's take an illustration. So this blue line is again the time series of observed temperatures in Helsinki since the beginning of the 20th century. And now this red line represents a climate model based estimate of which kind of temperatures would have been observed, assuming that everything else were similar, but the global mean temperature had always been at the present day level. So in the end of the time series, the blue and the red lines are the same, but when we go further back in time, a difference develops. And here in the beginning of the 20th century, it's typically of, the, of 2 degrees centigrade. And this is because, well, the global mean temperature has increased by about 1 degree since then. But according to these climate model simulations, we can expect approximately 2 degrees of local winter warming in Finland for each 1 degree of global temperature change. And now when we look closely at this adjusted time series, the red line, we see that actually the last winter is not anymore the warmest one. So actually the adjusted temperature for this in the 1924-25 is even slightly higher 
than what was observed in last winter. So let us now get back to these probability distributions. So this one was the one that we got directly from the observations. The blue line in this previous slide. And in, when we use these adjusted observations, the red line, we get an estimate for the present day condition. So now there is a shift towards the right, towards higher temperatures as a whole. And one can also see that there is a slight narrowing of the curve, so that the uh, shift in the uh, cold end is slightly larger than that in the warm end. And this is because these climate model simulations are suggesting that there should be a slight decrease in, in the annual variability of winter temperatures in Northern Europe. In any case, this shift to the right means that the probability of exceeding the value in last winter has increased. Now the estimate is about 1.6%, which is still quite low, but nevertheless several times higher than what we obtained directly by using this 20th century observation. So does this now mean that we should wait another about 60 years to experience another as mild winter, most likely not, because the climate is warming all the time. And as the climate is warming, the probability will continue to increase. So here is what we get from climate model simulations as a best estimate for the year 2050 under the RCP 4.5 scenario. So still there is the, the, the distribution is going towards higher temperatures. And now there is already a 7% probability of exceeding 2.3 degrees. So still a relatively uncommon event, but by no means exceptional. And when we go 40 years forward in time, year 2090, we get this green line, and now a 16% probability of winters that are even warmer than the one that we experienced last year. So clearly, this climate change is affecting the probability of these very mild winters is increasing non-linearly when the climate gets warmer. But of course, these actual numeric values depend on what you assume on the greenhouse gas emissions. So when we look at these different RCP scenarios, which are shown here for the carbon dioxide emissions, we can see that this RCP 4.5 is actually the second lowest of the four scenarios. And the upper uh, range, uh, uh, extreme of this range, RCP 8.5 actually has much larger and increasing greenhouse gas emissions. So now we can ask what would happen if this very pessimistic scenario would be realized. So the answer is here. So when you look at the numbers, the probability for 2050 is not yet, yet that sensitive to the scenario, but in the end of the century, under this very extreme RCP 8.5 scenario, actually the top of the probability curve, the most likely temperature, has got, uh, increased to about 3 degrees centigrade. And more than 60% of the winters in Helsinki would be expected to, to be milder than the last winter was. So what this we can conclude from this is that, first of all, the warming that we have already had this far has already increased the probability of these very mild winters quite substantially. So, it, uh, so, so the temperatures that we have observed last winter are now several times more prob probable than they were in the 20th century. In the future, such mild winters will become increasingly common. But how much more common? This depends very strongly on the evolution of the greenhouse gas emissions. 
So this was the first part. The second part is about the snow condition. So let me start from the observations. So here I am depicting the snow depth observed in last winter at two locations, Helsinki at the south coast of Finland, Sodankylä in central Finnish Lapland. You can see the coordinates from the headers. The solid lines are the mean values for the last 30 year normal period and the bars are the observations for last winter. So the south coast of Finland was basically snow free almost over the whole winter. The maximum value was just three centimeters. And previously, at least at some point of the winter, the snow depth has always been at least 15 centimeters. In Sodankula, by contrast, snow started to accumulate quite fast already in November, and this continued throughout the winter season. So the maximum in the middle of August, sorry, April, was 127 centimeters, which exceeded the previous record by eight centimeters. So now then the question is whether the last winter was a good analogy of how climate change will be affecting snow conditions in Finland. So first of all, there was little snow in southern Finland because it was so mild, for example, in Helsinki, the December, January, February mean temperature was 5.8 degrees above the mean for 1981-2010. On the other hand, there was much snow in Lapland because there was a lot of precipitation. In Sodankula, the precipitation anomaly for these three months was 67%. And now when we think about climate model projections, what they are saying, they are first of all saying that it should become warmer, and this most likely leads to even less snow in southern Finland. On the other hand, these projections also indicate an increase, particularly in winter precipitation in northern Europe. And as if we assume that winter precipitation in Lapland still falls as snow, so there should also be more snow in Lapland. Or is this actually the case? So let's next look what climate model simulations are saying. And in this case, I'm using climate model, uh, uh, regional climate model simulations for the Eurocodex project. It's based on a total of 17 model simulations, although I'm only showing mean values in this presentation. These simulations have a relatively high resolution of 12 kilometers. It's a good thing because it means that the uh, geometry of the Baltic Sea and the Scandinavian ma mountains is already quite well resolved. What affects these results in quantitative terms is that these simulations are based on the RCP 8.5 scenario with very large greenhouse gas emissions. So it might be that the simulations actually exaggerate the same change, particularly in the end of this century. And here in the following, my baseline period will be the last 39 winters from 1981-82 to 2019-2020. And I'm using the snow water equivalent as a measure of snow amount. So what are these climate model simulations telling us? So here we have the projected change in snow water equivalent from the past 39 winters to the next 39 winters for January and March. And we can see that both maps are dominated by this yellow and red colors, which means a decrease in snow amount. So for example, here close to Helsinki at the south coast, the decrease is of the order of 35% in January and 50% in March. Even in central Lapland, snow amount decreases, although the change is only, is only of the order of 15%. Only here locally, 
over the mountains in northern Sweden, there are some grid points where the chain is close to zero. And in these areas, there is a lot of precipitation. And on the other hand, the winters are quite cold. So it is makes it possible that the increase in precipitation is compensating for the effect of the warming. So let us next look in some more detail at our two locations. Uh, sorry, not, not yet, not yet. First, first this one, which is just showing the changes in the end of the century after the, uh, in the period of beginning 2060. So basically the same geographical pattern, but larger decreases in snow amount. So 75 to 80% in the south coast of Finland and of the order of 30% in Lapland. So now if we look at the seasonality of these things, so what I'm showing here is the average values of snowfall and snow water equivalent in a grid box close to Helsinki at the south coast of Finland in three 39 periods. Black one, the last uh, 39 winters. Blue one, the next 39 winters. And the red one, the 39 winters towards the end of this century. And in both diagrams, I am representing the winter season from September up to June in the next year. So what we can conclude for Helsinki is that there is a projected decrease in snowfall, which means that this increase in total precipitation is compensated by a much larger fraction of rainfall, even in winter. But nevertheless, this modern projection suggests that at least in the near term, there will be quite, still quite substantial amount of snow falling. So in relative terms, this decrease in snow water equivalent is larger. And this is telling us that the fraction of the fallen snow that stays on ground is also getting smaller. Which is of course quite natural because this warming means that there will be longer and longer periods with temperatures above zero and therefore snow, more snow melt. Then when we look at the same situation in Sorankula in Lapland, it becomes somewhat more interesting. So actually in the middle of winter from approximately December to March, it seems that the amount of snowfall stays basically the same. Nevertheless, the snow water equivalent is decreasing and there are two explanations. So first of all, even in Lapland, the amount of snowfall is decreasing in the fall and in the spring because of these higher temperatures. So the total amount of snow that is falling during the winter season is still smaller. And to some extent, even in Lapland, this larger frequency of above zero temperatures means that there will be more snow melt during the winter season. So the summary is that these climate model projections are indicating a decrease in snow in Finland throughout the winter. And this is not only true for the Eurocodex models, but it's also seen in other examples of modern simulations. And in particular, it also holds in northern Finland, although it's important to note that this decrease is smaller than in the south of the country. And why the snow amount is decreasing? Simply because the increase in precipitation is not large enough to, co to compensate the effects of the increase in temperature. So here are the projections of the changes in temperature and precipitation to the uh, last 39 period in the end of the century as average over these Eurocodex simulations. And in this case, I'm considering the period from November to March. This is the time that uh, when in the present climate still 
uh, large majority of precipitation in northern Finland falls as snow. So in Finnish Lapland, there is a warming of typically about five degrees centigrade under this uh, strong, uh, strong emission scenario and a precipitation increase of about 15%. So 3% of increased precipitation for each one degree of warming. For comparison, if we take the same November to March period in last winter, in Sodankula, the temperature anomaly was about 3 degrees centigrade, whereas precipitation was 43% about the average. So it's quite clear that this projected long-term changes in precipitation are still relatively modest compared with the last interannual variability, whereas this projected long-term warming is actually quite large in comparison with the variability. This last slide is not based on model simulations. It's based on observations. This is from a paper from Anna Luomaranta and co-authors. And the map is showing the trend in the winter maximum snow depth in Finland between 1961 and 2014. And it's actually quite consistent with this climate model project. So there has been a decrease in snow depth, particularly in the southern part of the country. In northern Finland, it's not as quite as clear, but still there are more areas with decrease than increase. So the conclusion for this part was that the last winter was a good analogy for the effect of climate change on snow conditions in southern Finland, where inter-annual variation in snow amount mainly results from variations in temperature. In northern Finland, mild winters quite often have a lot of snow because they also tend to have a lot of precipitation. Uh, and this is because the atmospheric circulation variations in it tend to have similar effects on both the of temperature and precipitation. Nevertheless, in the long term, we can expect that the snow amount will be reduced even in northern Finland. And this is because the average winter precipitation is not increasing as much as one might expect from the interannual relationship between temperature and precipitation. So this was this was it. So I guess there is still a possibility to give uh, to ask some questions. 